Yo, what's going on snipers and welcome back to our first Stanley Cup Finals rematch episode of 2018. So basically in the last episode we did Detroit and Pittsburgh from 2009 and it was our first one that had a different outcome than the actual finals as Detroit won the series in 5 games. So now we're going back 2 years into the past with the Sens and the Anaheim Ducks. I remember the Stanley Cup Finals pretty clearly considering that I'm a Sens fan and I've been a Sens fan since 2004 so this was a pretty good Stanley Cup Finals and except for the fact that the Sens lost the series in five games. So basically to get there the Sens went through some really good teams in really fast fashion. So they went for, through the uh, Pittsburgh Penguins in round one who had Sidney Crosby. Crosby was only in his second season in the NHL, and Malkin was actually only in his first season in the NHL, so Pittsburgh was literally just getting into the playoffs at that stage. Then on to the second round, the Sens beat out Martin Brodeur in the New Jersey Devils. Martin Brodeur obviously was a really good goaltender for so long, but that was closer to the end of his career, I think. Well, maybe not really, actually, because he stopped playing in like 14-15, but it was still one of the last seasons of his career in New Jersey. And then on to the third round, the Sens took out the hot Buffalo Sabres, who had some really good players that were kind of underrated, like Daniel Briere, Maxima Fanaginov, and all those type of guys, Ryan Miller too. Um, the Sens went to the Stanley Cup Finals when Daniel Elfordson scored in overtime. A lot of Sens fans know that goal. It's the best goal in Senators history, probably. While the Ducks were on a similar run, they won round one in five games against the Minnesota Wild. Then they went on to round two where they beat the Canucks in five games. But in the conference finals, they took out the veteran Detroit Red Wings in only six games to advance to the Stanley Cup Finals for the first time since 2003. And then it came to the Stanley Cup Finals. People thought this finals looked really good on paper, like it would be an easy win for Ottawa. But to the, be honest, it wasn't really that easy because Anaheim had some elite players like Chris Pronger on their defensive core, as well as Scott Niedemeyer. And then in goal, they had J.S. Jaguar, and then they had a really good forward in Timo Solani. But they also had some very good youth players. Like, there was Ryan Getzlav, who just came into the NHL the season before. He was only 21 years old. And same with Corey Perry. He was only 21 at the time as well. As for the Sens, they were led by their first line, which was, like, ridiculously insane. Obviously, everybody knows the Heatley, Spezza, and Elfordson line which combined for 113 goals, 166 assists, and 279 points during the regular season. As well, during the playoffs, they put up a total of 66 points in 20 games. So these, this line was insane. Heatley was the goal scorer, obviously, because he had 50 goals this season and the season before. While Spezza was a assist machine, and he didn't play actually the full season because he was injured for part of it, but he was still, like I think, part over po point per game or something like that and then Alfredson was just a good two-way guy he could pass the puck he could shoot the puck he scored a lot well he scored like 29 goals I think and he assisted like 50 something of them but Heatley was the goal scorer so that's why a lot of people always uh, joke around and say 50 in 07 because he scored 50 in 2007 but as I said this finals that would prevail as and the Ducks would win the series in five games so basically game one, the Sens I think lost a close one. I think the Sens actually scored the first two goals, but then they blew the lead and lost by like a score of three to two. I'm not 100% sure of that. That's one that I'm just thinking off the top of my head. Um, I know game two for sure was a one nothing loss as the Sens were playing a really good defensive game the entire game. And then late in the third, Sammy Paulson would score and the Ducks would win one nothing and take a 2 nothing series lead. Game three, I think this is the game where the Ducks would. Did the Ducks take a three nothing series lead? I don't even know, but I know at least um, there was a pretty good offensive game that the Ducks had in Ottawa, and then there was the one game where the Sens literally just scraped by in Ottawa, winning by like a score of two one or one nothing or something like that. And I remember Alfredson scoring then. And then went to game number five, and game number five was just a monumental collapse. The Sens lost like five to two. Chris Phillips even scored on his own net and all that sort of stuff. So it was just not a very good Stanley Cup Finals for Sens fans to remember. However, we did actually have our chance just last season where we almost got to the Stanley Cup Finals. 
hopefully we could get back there again someday but anyways now that you guys got the history let's get into the jerseys for each team okay guys here is the jerseys for the anaheim ducks so as you can see it looks pretty similar to their current one uh, this one is almost 100% accurate with every like all the colors and all that sort of stuff. The only thing that is different with it is that logo that's on the front because that logo wasn't really the official logo back in those days for the Ducks. They had an actual thing like that was the starting of the word Ducks and it said Anaheim Ducks on it. It's kind of hard to explain but anyways this is pretty much authentic to what it looked like then. Then their away jerseys literally just reversed in color. Feels very vintage duck for me. I could picture people like Timo Solani wearing this. So yeah, that's the jerseys for the ducks. Because um, they don't have an alternate. Or well, they probably did have an alternate from when they were the Mighty Ducks. But I don't know if they even really wore it. So that is the ducks. Now let's get on over to the Senators. Okay, so here is the Sens jerseys. These are not accurate at all. However, it's only like closest to what the color scheme I could do. So here is the home jersey. Um, it actually, it had the same color scheme, but the black thing was like kind of, it's kind of hard to explain it. It was right, like, it was a different kind of thing. This is the Montreal jersey, but I just added like stuff to it. And it kind of looks more like the game, uh, the jersey they wore for the outdoor game just recently. Um, so yeah, that's the home jersey I made for them. Here is their away jersey. Obviously, the logo is not accurate as well because these logos were ones that I guess came out after, like in 2008. And um, 2007 had different logos. So. But this jersey has the same kind of color scheme, different font as well. So it's not accurate, like I said, but um, it's closest as I could do. And in a sense, did have an alternate jersey back in these days, and it was a black jersey. So I kind of made one as well kind of reminds me of Germany too much with this color scheme but whatever there's two German players actually on the sun so it's okay so now that you guys seen the jerseys let's flip on over to the lines for the Anaheim Ducks okay guys here are the lines for the Anaheim Ducks starting off here on the left side he's actually a center you have a good defensive forward in Andy McDonald McDonald is actually a really underrated player for my like opinion at least because I looked up what his stats were like during this season and he actually put up like 70 something points during the regular season a really good passer not much of a goal scorer until the Stanley Cup finals he actually scored a lot of goals against the Sens um, but he was a really good piece to this team then at center you have Ryan Getzlav and I read Ryan Getzlav only in 86 because that's still a like kind of technically a first line forward in NHL 18 and he's only 21, so he still will grow to being that elite center he currently is. Um, obviously, Ryan Genslav, you guys know him all pretty much. He's a really good passer and a, a pretty decent like two-way forward, I guess you could say. Then on the right side, you got Timo Solani, who was 36 at this point in time. Timo Solani, obviously, the probably the best player in Anaheim Ducks history other than Paul Correa and like people like Jess Aguirre and whatnot. Timo Solani was a beast obviously in his rookie season with the Jets putting up like 76 goals um, and throughout his entire career he played really good and I think he finished just over a point per game in the NHL and I think actually just last year or this year he was inducted into the Hockey Hall of Fame which is pretty cool so there you go, Timo Solani. Then on the second line, I got Travis Moen. Like, I could technically move Moen and Kunitz. I think at least one in Game 5, because that was the goal that Chris Phillips scored on his own net. Then at center, you got Rob Niedemeyer, who was also in our 1996 Stanley Cup Finals as a member of the Florida Panthers. He also went to the Finals in 03, but couldn't get it done. But this was his first Cup win, which he won with his brother, Scott Niedemeyer. Now on the right side here we got Corey Perry and Corey Perry obviously you guys know him as well a really good like sniper to an extent because he put up I think a 50 goal season or close to a 50 goal season recently um, I made him just a bit worse than Getzlav because technically he is a bit worse than Getzlav like a lot of people look more at Getzlav I think than Perry but um, yeah so there's that. Then on the third line here, you got Chris Kunitz, who was in the 09 final in our last episode. He's won a lot of Stanley Cups. He won three with Pittsburgh now. He won one with Anaheim, so he's already up to four championships. And he currently plays for the Tampa Bay Lightning, which means he could be going for a potential fifth cup. 
Obviously, Kunitz is another good two-way guy. He could block shots. He could score goals, too, decently when he plays with the right players. So there's Chris Kunitz. Then at center, you got Sammy Paulson. And as I said, in game number two, Sammy Paulson had the only goal of the game. It was a really tight game for the most part. And then he broke open the middle and took like a 2 nothing seriously going back to Ottawa. Then on the right side here, you got Dustin Penner. And Dustin Penner had a pretty short career for the most part. He won a total, I think, of two or three Stanley Cups. Maybe it was two of Stanley Cups, but he won one here with the Ducks, and then he won one with the LA Kings. However, he did actually kind of retire, I guess, from the NHL. Like he's, I think he is listed as a free agent, but I think he recently retired because, well, technically retired because he's now doing DJing and something like that. I don't even know. If you look him up on Twitter, it says something about him being an e DJ. So I don't know what he's doing now, but he was a very big physical presence on the ice too, as you can see with that height and weight, six foot four, two forty two. Definitely a really big power forward. Um, I think he scored a decent amount of goals some seasons, but overall wise, he was a really slow skater and whatnot. Then on the fourth line here, you got Brad May, and it's actually kind of funny because I saw Brad May uh, tweet recently that he was actually traded to the Toronto Maple Leafs for future considerations, and those future considerations were never discussed. So he was basically traded for a bag of hockey hockey pucks, is what he said on Twitter. Um, I replied to him and told him that I was actually making the Ducks back in those, like, on, like the 2007 Ducks in NHL 18, and he liked my tweet, so it's pretty cool. Brad May had a pretty well-known goal for Buffalo Sabres fans, the one where the uh, commentator ch uh, chanted Mayday, Mayday, you know, Rick Jeanette or whatever his name is. Um, so yeah, Brad May, um, he was more of a grinder. He got a lot of penalty minutes, scored goals sometimes, and all that sort of stuff. Then at center, you got Todd Marchant. Todd Marchant's another kind of two-way defensive player. Um, he was not very um, he was not very injury prone. Like he got a lot of injuries to the head, I think mainly. But he was getting older at this point in time, um, and he was also really short. So he had a, a decent amount of speed on him. But he was just more of a very good defensive player that you could put on your penalty kill. Then on the right side here, you got Sean Thornton, and Sean Thornton also went to the Stanley Cup Finals in one as a member of the Boston Bruins in 2011. Just a pretty, like, solid grinder as well that gets in the fights a lot. Um, I saw a lot of the pictures when I looked him up with the Ducks at him getting into fights with people, so he was more of, like, a, an enforcer kind of idea, but he was he could score goals sometimes and put up points when needed, so I technically put him as a grinder. Because the difference really between grinders and um, enforcers is grinders could score enforcers and really don't score that often. So that is the forward core. Now let's get into the depth forwards, which there is a lot of. So starting off, we got Ryan Shannon. Ryan Shannon played also for the Senators at one point in time, as well as the Tampa Bay Lightning. Another really short player, only five foot nine, 175 pounds. Um, he was pretty young in the Stanley Cup Finals. I think he only played like maybe one or two games during the playoffs. But he was a pretty decent two-way kind of guy. Just really like really good speedster, kind of defensive. Nothing really that big, to be honest. And then we got George Peros, who's definitely an enforcer. George Peros got into a lot of fights in his career. Funny thing is now he's, I think, doing something with the player safety uh, for, like, concussions and stuff like that. So, kind of funny how a guy that goes from fighting is now trying to protect those that get fought. And you also got Joe Motzko. So, Joe Motzko, I don't really know much on this guy. This guy really didn't play in the NHL. Um, he only played maybe a couple seasons or he played, like, less than a couple hundred games. He's not much of anything, to be honest. So, I put him as an AHL top six forward because he... Didn't play much games in the Stanley Cup Finals, and he was only 26, so I think he's more of an AHL bound player. Then you got Drew Miller, and Drew Miller is the brother of Ryan Miller. And Ryan Miller was defeated in the previous round by the Senators, so Drew Miller took it upon himself, and well, not really upon himself, but his team took it upon him, and they managed to eliminate the Sens in five games. Drew Miller still plays currently for the Detroit Red Wings, I think, as maybe an AHL player. I don't know, but he's dropped off a lot. He's more of a bottom six guy, so that's Drew Miller. Then at center here, you got Ryan Carter, and Ryan Carter still played up till last season as an AHL player, really, for Iowa in Minnesota's AHL affiliate, I remember, because 
in our Minnesota Wild GM mode, he was actually <clears throat> he's actually a depth guy on our team. So yeah, that was Ryan Carter, just more of a grinder kind of guy. He didn't really score much in his career either, so he had kind of yeah, he had a short career because he was already 23 at this stage, and I think he only played till he was like 33. So really short career for Ryan Carter. And in the final depth forward is Mark Hardigan. This guy actually won two Stanley Cups, but as like kind of a fringe NHL player, he won one here in 2007 with the Ducks, and then he won one as a member of the Detroit Red Wings in 2008. So he went where the Cup went. He won two Cups in only like five seasons played in the NHL. Like it was a really short career for him, but he still won two Cups. Now into the defensive core for the Anaheim Ducks, starting off with the top two pairing. You got Scott Niedermeyer, obviously one of the best defensemen probably that's played in the NHL in the last like 20 to, I guess you could, yeah, 20 to 25 years probably. So, yeah, Scott Niemeyer was just a really good guy. He was the captain of the team, brother of Rob. Obviously, like I said, Scott won a ton of cups with the New Jersey Devils, and then he won, obviously, with the Ducks here. Um, just a very good, solid player. He could put up offensive points. Like, I think he had, like, 60-something points during the regular season. Just a really good passer and a guy that could score goals, too, nonetheless. Then his defense partner is Francois Boschman. Boschman is actually back in Anaheim currently. Um, he actually had a pretty good playoffs as well, putting up like eight points during the playoffs. Um, he scored more goals, I think, than uh, Scott Niedermeyer and Chris Pronger, actually, which is kind of interesting. Um, so, yeah, that's Francois Boschman. And on the second pairing here, you got Chris Pronger, and Chris Pronger was in our 2006 Stanley Cup Finals, which was the year before this, as a member of the Edmonton Oilers. Obviously, he didn't get it done in 06, so he moved on to Anaheim, where he would win his first Stanley Cup. I think in his career because yeah he never won one with St. Louis or Hartford or all those teams so yeah that was Chris Pronger then you got Sean O'Donnell who was just a very solid defensive forward or not for defensive defenseman he played really good on the penalty kill a lot of the time blocking shots and stick checks and all that sort of stuff he didn't score that often and put up much points so he was more of just one of those guys you put on your penalty kill that blocks shots so that's Sean O'Donnell. Then on the third pairing here, you got Kent Huskins. And Kent Huskins actually is from just outside of Ottawa. I forget which place. Maybe it was like Carper or something like that. But he's from close to Ottawa. Um, that's probably why he got a bit of attention from the media when he played against the Sens in the Stanley Cup Finals. He wasn't really much of anything during his career. Like as you can see, he's already 27 at this point in time. And I think this was his first season in the NHL, so he kind of was a fringe NHL player and didn't play in the NHL for that long. I think he retired a couple years ago already. So yeah, that's Kent Huskins. And then we got Joe DePenta, who's another kind of fringe NHL guy. He was also 27 at this point in time. He didn't have a long career either. He only played like a couple seasons, I think, with the Ducks and with maybe the Canucks. Um, but yeah, he wasn't really much of anything. I don't really know how to explain him. Then on to the depth defenseman here, you got Richard Jackman. Richard Jackman was, I think, the brother of Barrett Jackman, but I could be wrong with that. Um, he, they look a lot alike, but Richard Jackman, anyways, just another solid like depth kind of guy on this team that's also 27. Um, he didn't produce much offensively, and he only played like eight games in the playoffs. So he was, like, I don't know a lot of these players. They're not that well like, not really that good of players, to be honest. But I do know this guy. This guy is Aaron Rome. And Aaron Rome went to the Stanley Cup Finals as well in 2012 as a member. Or not 2012, 2011, sorry. As a member of the Vancouver Canucks when they faced the Boston Bruins. Unfortunately, they lost. And his career was ended by some sort of, like, concussion problems, I think, in 2013. So he didn't have that long of a career. And he only won one cup as a member of the Ducks. Then in between the pipes, you got Jean-Sebastien Jaguer. Jean-Sebastien Jaguer won his first Stanley Cup here as a member of the Ducks. Just a very, very good goaltender during his career. Um, probably one of the best goaltenders during the early 2000s and whatnot. Like, he actually won the Conn Smythe the year that the New Jersey Devils won the Cup, even though uh, his team didn't win the Cup, and it was the first time that happened, really, in the NHL history. So... He was a really good goalie, like I said, during the 2000s, and he finally got a cup in 2007. It's kind of nice to see that a lot of these older veterans guys getting their first Stanley Cup wins in 2007, 
but it's against my centers, so it's kind of sad to see that as well. And then backup goaltender, you got Ilya Brzgalov, who was pretty young at this um, point in time. This was only his like third season in the NHL, I think, because he played a bit in 03 04, um, and then he played a bit in 05 06, and then he played as the backup fully in 06 07. And yeah, Brzgalov, obviously just a pretty funny character nonetheless. Why have to be mad, you know, that type of idea. He was a really funny goaltender for the most part, and I think he's retired now because I don't think he's even playing in the KHL. I think his last season he played, he actually was back in Anaheim, so it's kind of cool. So yeah, that's Ilya Brzgalov, and that is the entire Anaheim Ducks team, so... Now that you guys seen the Ducks, let's flip on over to the Ottawa Senators. Okay guys, here is the lines for the Ottawa Senators. Starting off with the first line, you got Danny Heat, like I was saying, the Heatley, Spezza, Alfredson line. Heatley was the sniper on that line. I put him as an 89 with some really good shooting categories. Um, like I said, 50 goals in back-to-back -back seasons for this guy. He had 50 in 0506 and 50 in 0607. He was a beast when he was with Ottawa for the early stages until he requested to be traded. And then his career pretty much fell off the face of the earth because it slowly got worse. He played okay in San Jose, okay in Minnesota. But then Minnesota like traded him to Anaheim. And Anaheim uh, didn't, wait actually, yeah, they I think Anaheim assigned him to their AHL affiliate. Which is pretty crazy because Anaheim was a pretty deep team I guess. So they just decided to send him down to the AHL. He'd play in the AHL and eventually I think just got traded to like Florida's AHL affiliate. And then eventually he'd go to Germany for one more season, and I don't think he's played since. So his career fell off the face of the earth, but he was very good during his prime with the Sens, and he used to be one of my favorite players until he requested his trade. Then on center, you got Jason Spezza, who is another former player of the Senators, obviously, because he currently plays for the Dallas Stars. Like I was saying, Spezza, just a really good passer, and he was really young during the Stanley Cup Finals. This was only his third season, or... Yeah, I think third season in the NHL. I think he, be I believe he started in 03-04 or 2002-03, but this was one of the earliest stages of his career. He actually had a brother that played for the Ottawa 67s nonetheless too. Um, I remember uh, going to 67s games way back, and his brother Matthew was the goaltender, so it's kind of interesting. Then on the right side, you got the best player in center's history, Daniel Alfredson. I made him a two-way forward because Alfredson was really good in his defensive zone as well, but he could also help you out offensively, obviously. Um, yeah, just a really good piece to this team. Obviously, the captain of the team, too. So that's Daniel Alfredson, and that's why I made him a 90 because he's got really good leadership qualities, and he could lead this team by example. Then on the second line, you got Antoine Vermette, who's actually now an Anaheim Ducks player. So it's kind of interesting there as well. He's actually a center as well. He's got really good face-off stats. But he was when he played for Ottawa, I remember him mostly as a really good speedster. Um, he had a really good wrist shot and all that sort of stuff. I think he's still like that, but he's dropping off, obviously, considering he's now, I think, closer to his retirement age. Like, he might be 35, and he's played over a 1,000 games in the NHL, which is pretty crazy to believe that. Because, like, when I started watching the Sens or something like that, I think he was only, like, in his first couple, like, first 200 games in the NHL. So, yeah, that's Antoine Vermette. And then at center, you got Mike Fisher. And Mike Fisher retired just last season, went to the Stanley Cup Finals in 2017 as a member of the Nashville Predators, but didn't get it done. I would have liked to see him win a Stanley Cup, but unfortunately, he didn't get it done. Um, but in, during his time in Ottawa, he was a pretty good goal scorer, really good speed, and then he could also forecheck really hard and like throw hits and stuff like that. So he was just a really good guy to have on the team. And um, eventually he'd get traded to Nashville. or Yeah, I think yeah he got traded to Nashville because um, he met Kerry Underwood, I guess, at a concert or something. I think it was in Ottawa. And yeah, they hit it off or something. I don't even know. On the right side, we got Peter Schaefer and Peter Schaefer was from Saskatchewan. He was kind of a defensive forward as well. Um, he scored actually a decent amount of points during the regular season. I think he had like 40 or 50 points. Um, but he had a really short career. I think it was mainly due to injuries. Um, I think I actually met him once as well. He used to wear, no wear number 15 until Heatley came to the Sens, and then he had to switch to number 27. 
Um, but yeah, I think I remember meeting him back in, maybe it was 2007, I don't even know, but I met him a long time ago. Then another player I met was Chris Kelly. Chris Kelly obviously played for the Sens just last season, too. Uh, Chris Kelly, a very good defensive player, also won a Stanley Cup in Boston in 2011. So a lot of former players that um, of the Boston Bruins, surprisingly, between both teams. And then on center, you got Mike Comrie. Mike Comrie, just like Mike Fisher, actually was married to a uh, celebrity kind of thing, as he was married to Hilary Duff, if you guys know Hilary Duff from... Um, all those old TV shows, I don't even remember that, Zoe 101 maybe, was it Zoe 101, no maybe not, I don't even know, I don't think so actually, I don't know, but I think he was married, he was married to, definitely to Hilary Duff, I just don't remember what show Hilary Duff was known for, because I was really young back in those days, but yeah, Mike Connery was married to her until like I think a couple years ago, and then they got divorced, but anyways, in the NHL, Mike Connery was a pretty good passer he could score goals put up points he came over this season from the phoenix coyotes at the time i think the Sens only gave up like a pick and maybe they gave up uh, alexi kegarodov and kegarodov never became an nhl player really he only played like six games in the nhl and he's not even playing in the khl anymore so the Sens definitely won that trade comrie played for the Sens, i think in two different stints um he was just a really short kind of guy that could past the puck and whatnot so that's Comrie and then on the right side you got Chris Neal who literally just retired like at the end of December I actually got to see him play in the alumni game that the Sens had um so pretty much everybody from this team is gone now I guess which kind of sucks but Chris Neal obviously you guys should know everything about Chris Neal gets into fights a bit of a pest on the ice but a player you guys love to have on your team he also scored actually two goals in the playoffs and put up two assists so he was he scored when he needed to he came in the clutch sometimes but he also like threw like a lot of hits penalty minutes and all that crap so yeah chris neal one of my favorite players probably as a senator then on the fourth line here you got a bust in oleg saprikin and oleg saprikin was actually drafted originally by the calgary flames 11th overall but he only played like 300 games in the NHL. So Oleg Saprikin just fell off the face of the earth. Like he was 25 in the Stanley Cup Finals, but I think that was the last year he played in the NHL. And then he eventually went to the KHL where he would end his career, I think in 15-16. But I could be wrong with that. In the center, you got Dean McCammon, who was 33 at this point in time. Um, later in his career, Dean McCammon was battling a lot of injury problems. Like he suffered a hit in 2008 from Steve Downey, which was a really disgusting hit. I remember watching it on TV. Um, so yeah, Dean McCammon was like concussed because of it. And I think that's kind of why his career fell off right around this stage. Um, but he was a very good defensive player and he actually had five goals, three assists in the Stanley Cup Finals. Or not in the Stanley Cup Finals, in the Stanley Cup Playoffs. So he had eight points in... I think he only played like 18 games, so he played didn't even play every single game in the playoffs, but he put up a decent amount of goals and assists. Then we got Patrick Eves before his like giant beard. Um, obviously, Patrick Eves now also plays for the Anaheim Ducks, so it seems that Vermette and Eves like, wanted to go to the team that beat them 10 years ago. So yeah, Patrick Eves, this was like early stages of his career, only his second year in the NHL. He was only 22. He only played seven games in the playoffs, and I think he only put up, like, one assist. So he's more of a depth guy on the team. Um, I don't even know if he actually played in the finals, but I just put him there because that's the only forward that is actually, like, depth or, well, actually on the team that I could put there. So, because there's not a lot of depth players on this team. There's no depth forward, so let's get on to the defensemen. So starting off with the defensive core, we got Wade Redden. So Wade Redden, um, one of the best centers defensemen in history. Um, he played with the Sens up to 2008, I think it was, before he went to the Rangers. And then he'd eventually play with like, the Boston Bruins and the St. Louis Blues and retired, I think, in 2012-13. Um, he was also at the alumni game I went to. He was kind of like the Carlson before the Carlson, but he was nowhere near as good. Like He had, I think, a couple seasons where he put up like 40-something assists and like 50 points or something like that. So he was a really solid defenseman to have on the team. And then you also got Anton Volchenkov, and Anton Volchenkov, known as the A-Train back in his day with the Sens. 
he threw a lot of big hits and then he could also block shots like no tomorrow he was the shot block master i think i put his shot blocking at like almost 99 i put it at 92 because he was a very good defensive defenseman he didn't score that much but he actually had i think two goals maybe in the stanley cup finals or two goals in the playoffs but he didn't score that often but when he did i guess he made an impact so he was a pretty good player um a lot of sense fans really liked him back in those days for blocking shots and just giving it his all out there and he actually currently still plays like he took 2015-16 off but he went back to the khl in the 16-17 and he's still on that same team this season so it's kind of cool that he's still playing 10 years later i think he's the only one out of this team that is still playing which is kind of cool then on the second pairing, you got Chris Phillips. Chris Phillips played over a thousand games with the Sens, and I think he's actually played the most games as an Ottawa Senator, even though a bit more than Daniel Alfredson, like maybe one game more than Daniel Alfredson. But Phillips was with us for a long time. Um, a lot of Sens fans are kind of skeptical. Like Phillips was, he was a nice guy on and off the ice, but he made some stupid plays and he was kind of a slow skater. So he's kind of like the Jonathan Erickson that currently is in Detroit, um, but. Yeah, basically Chris Phillips was okay of a defenseman. I I I didn't mind him. I actually, um, since I work in Canadian Tire Center, I was going through the elevators, and one day Chris Phillips was in there as well. He's really massive in person. Like he's six foot three and two hundred nineteen pounds. But when you're like I'm only six, almost six feet, and I weigh only like one hundred twenty pounds. So I look up to this guy, and it's just like wow. He's pretty big, even though he's only six foot three. He's a pretty big guy. Then you got Andre Mazeros. Andre Mazeros was only 21 in the Stanley Cup Finals. Um, Mazeros came into the NHL the year before this, and he was actually a really good defenseman when he played for the Sens in his early stages. Like he scored, I think, a total of like seven or eight goals, but he also put up like 20 something assists. So he put up like a decent amount of points, 30 to 40 points, at age 21. I think he played for the Vancouver Giants when he was in the WHL if I remember correctly, but he was a good player when he played for the Sens. I don't know if he still plays. His career kind of fell off a lot once he went to the Flyers and the Sabres. So that's Mazeros. Then on the bottom six pairing, you got Joe Corvo. Joe Corvo, um, he came to the Sens multiple times in his career, ended the second time stint when he came to the Sens. Um, he actually came, uh, what was it? He actually was traded to Carolina with Patrick Eves. I think it was the year after this, or maybe it was the year after that. I don't know. I think it was the year after this, but he was traded with Patrick Eves for Corey Stillman, and I think we also got back Mike Commodore. So if you guys remember those dudes from the 2006 finals, those guys got traded for these two guys. So that's a little history, I guess, there. And then you got Tom Pricing, who was a very good, solid defense defenseman, but had a really short career as well. I think his career ended like in 2010 or 2009, but he was a really solid defenseman. Um, he actually also put up a lot of assists, like a lot of these defensemen on the team, so I put him as a two-way. And scratch for defensemen, we have Christoph Schubert. Even though he played all 20 playoff games, um, he, I think what I heard is he played actually as a forward for uh, this playoffs but I don't want to use him as a forward so we're just going to use him as a depth guy but yeah Christoph Schubert was one of the only German players in the NHL during this stage um, he had a really really short NHL career actually he only played five seasons from 2005-06 to 2009-10 2009-10 he played with the Atlanta Thrashers eventually he'd leave for the uh, German league and play I think for Hamburg which was kind of close to where his hometown is so he played with Hamburg for like to 15 16 and I think he currently plays in some like minor German league now so he like I can't even find any stats on him from how he's doing currently but anyways Christoph Schubert is now like 35 or 36 so he he was kind of just not really much of anything in the NHL but he did have some solid some points when he played I think he finished with like 72 points in almost 400 games in the NHL, so pretty solid for a defenseman. And he was big in size, too, six foot three, 230 pounds. And finally, onto the goaltenders for the Ottawa Senators, you got Ray Emery. Ray Emery, obviously wearing his Mike Tyson mask back in these days, because um, it wasn't, um, he didn't get his mask like banned 
Ben because I think his mask got banned because it had Mike Tyson on it biting someone's ear off or something. So, yeah, Ray Emery, though, was a really interesting character for goaltending because I think it was this season or the season before, but against the Buffalo Sabres, he got into a fight with Martin Biron. It was a pretty good uh, fisticuffs, and, yeah, Ray Emery was just one of those interesting goaltenders that wanted to get into fights or all that sort of stuff. So, yeah, Ray Emery, pretty cool goaltender. Then back up, you got Martin Gerber, who was just in our 2006 Stanley Cup Finals, so he literally was in the Finals back-to-back -back seasons. Um, obviously he won the year before this, but this year he didn't win. I put him as a fringe starter because technically he was a bit of a fringe starter because he was starter for the Sens for some years, and then he was also, like, a backup goaltender in, like, uh, Edmonton and Toronto and whatnot. So, yeah, that's Martin Gerber, and that is the Ottawa Senators. So now that you guys have seen the rosters, let's get into our playoff simulation. Okay, guys, let's get this playoff started. So before I actually start the simulation... Um, I also wanted to say what the next episode was, so I actually decided to choose what the Stanley Cup Finals is for the next episode, and the one after that actually too. So the next one we're going to be doing is the 1991 Finals. I wanted to make the Minnesota North Stars, so we're going to do the North Stars and the Penguins. So that's going to be an interesting one, because I get to make players like Mario Lemieux, and I get to make like Yarmar Yager with his old mullet. Uh, so that should be pretty fun. And then the one I think I want to do afterwards is, like, I don't even remember what year it's from, but it's, like, the 19, uh, yeah, it might be 1967, because I wanted to make the Toronto Maple Leafs and the Montreal Canadian like, Cup Finals from then, just so I could make, like, Johnny Bauer, considering he just passed away, like, a couple, it was almost probably a month ago by now. But it would be cool to do that Stanley Cup Finals, so we're going to do those two Stanley Cup Finals next, and then I'll let you guys vote on what you want to see next, but if you still want to comment down below what you want to see for the next Stanley Cup Finals matchups like in the future, that would be awesome, because I don't necessarily know what Stanley Cup Finals you guys want to see and what you don't. So anyways, let's get into the simulation. So the Ducks have home ice, the Ducks finished just ahead of the centers during the regular season. And so, yeah, they got home ice. So let's see what happens here at the Honda Center. First period, and it is 2-1 to one for the Ducks. So, Timo Solani opens the scoring. So, first line, right wing. And then the third liner, Chris Kunitz, comes through and made it 2 nothing. But Andre Mazeros, at age 21, pulling the Sens within one. Shots are 13-12 in favor of the Ducks. Second period, and it is still 2-1, so good defensive period for J.S. Shiger and for Ray Emery. Shots are 28-23 to in favor of the Ducks, but we have a pretty close battle, and I did not mean the quick sim that, goddammit. But the Ducks are going to take it by a final score of 3-1 to as Sean Thornton gets a late goal. Final shots were 39-32 to in favor of the Ducks. Let's take a look at all the stats. So, Timo Solani from Getzlav and Edemeyer, pretty self-explanatory. That goal would definitely happen. Chris Kunitz from Paulson and Penner. Mizeros from Kelly and Comrie. Thornton from May and Marchand. Interesting. Um, let's actually check the penalties as well, just to see if those guys are simulating well. So, Chris Neal taking penalties, that makes sense. Phillips Alfredson taking a penalty, that's weird. Pronger and Pricing got into a fight. Apparently, Chris Neal getting another penalty, uh, Francois Beauchemin, and a double minor for high sticking for Spezza. I guess that makes sense for the Spezza one, because Spezza, Spezza has a lot of size to him, and his stick was pretty long too. So, Jess Shiger gets first start, Kunitz the second start, and Timo Solani the third. Now, I'll try and slow sim the rest of the game, the rest of the series, kind of for each game. Just because I forgot that Jay Bryant Sabres fan wanted the, me to slow sim every single game. So, power play for the Senators, and it's a long one. But they don't score on it, but they're heavily out shooting the Ducks by, like, six shots. And they're going to strike first. The GOAT, Danny Heatley, comes through with the first goal of the game. Not a surprise that that first line is going to be clicking for the Sens. And it's one nothing them after one. Shots are 14-9 in favor of the Sens. Let's see what happens here in the second period. Almost halfway through the period. <clears throat> Sorry about that. Halfway through the period, still one nothing Sens, but the Ducks climbing back in shots. Ray Emery's still playing like a brick wall, trying to tie up the series. 
and it is going to stay 1-0 going into the third period. Shots 26-21 in favor of Ottawa. Let's see if they could lock it down here in the third period power play for the Sens. And once again, they don't click on it in another power play. And they don't click still on it. They're out shooting the Ducks now by 10 shots, but they can't get more than this one goal past Shea Shiger. Power play again. And they still don't score. They're 0 for 4 tonight, it looks like. And it is going to be a 1-0 final, just like in real life. But unfortunately, the real one was reversed as the Ducks would win 1-0. But this time, it was just a very good defensive game for both teams. And the Sens win 1-0. And they outshot Anaheim by 10, 11 shots, 43-32. to So a lot of shots, but not a lot of goals for both teams. So let's just look at the penalties actually as well. So Brad May, Peter Schaefer, uh Elbowing Major to Penner, wow. Fighting Major for Volchenkov and Thornton, interesting. Uh, Penner gets a cross-checking minor, a lot of penalties. Getzlav and Andy McDonald, interesting. And I wanted to check the goals, obviously. So the only goal, Heatley from Spezza and Corvo. Okay, three stars. Jay Jaguer gets first star once again, even though his team lost. Ramery, the second star. And Danny Heatley, the third star. So, this is pretty similar to the real one, except for the Ducks would have been up 2 nothing at this point in time. But now, if the Ducks win 3 straight, we might have an exact replica of the Stanley Cup Finals. So, it'd be kind of cool if that happens. Let's see what happens here. And game should be in place in Ottawa. Same building still, but it's now called Canadian Tire Center. Let's see if the Sens could get it done on home ice. And Peter Schaefer is going to open the scoring, and it's one nothing Ottawa. Here in period number one, but the Ducks are going to answer right back as Dustin Penner ties the game up. Shots are pretty tight as well, 9-9 nine, nine currently. And a very even first period as the Ducks outshot the Sens 12-10, and it is a 1-1 one, one game. So both goalies buckling this time. Let's see what happens here in the second period. The Sens getting some early chances. Same with the Ducks, though. Power play for the Sens, and they don't score on it. Last 10 minutes here of the second period. Pretty even game still. Power play for the Ducks. And they don't score. And we are going to the third period with a tie game. Still at 1. Shots 22-19 to 19 in favor of the Sens. Let's see who can get the winning goal here in the third period. Who's going to come through in the clutch power play for the Ducks. And they don't score on it. And the Sens are going to score there with 12.59 to go. Mike Fisher. It's 2-1 for Ottawa. Last 10 minutes here of the third period. Did the Ducks have another in them? Or is the Sens going to lock it down defensively and get an empty netter? And the Sens are going to hold on to a 2-1 victory. And this is already different than the actual Stanley Cup Finals. The Sens never, didn't even win two games in the actual Stanley Cup Finals. So, Peter Schaefer from Fisher and Vermette. So, was that second line? Yeah, second line that got the win for the Sens. Penner from Perry and Pronger. A lot of peas. <laughs> Fisher from Vermette and Schaefer. So that line, yeah, had two points each. Three stars, Emery, Fisher, and Schaefer. So the Sens have taken the lead in the series. Are the Sens going to beat up the Ducks in five games like the Ducks did to them? That would be kind of interesting. So game four still in uh, Scotiabank plays. The Ducks already strike first. Early on, 23 seconds in, Todd Marchant makes it one nothing Ducks. Trying to take the ca uh, crowd out of the game early, and let's see if the Ducks could add more to that, or are they going to let in a goal here? 5-on-3 for the Sens, and they don't score. The Sens' power play has been really bad so far, which is really surprising because you think it'd be really good with Heatley, Spezza, Alfredson, Redden, all that sort of stuff. Power play again for Ottawa, and they don't score still. I think they're like, they haven't scored a power play goal yet this series. And Kunitz scores to make it 2 nothing. Damn, it looks like the Ducks might tie up the series going back to Anaheim. Oh, but Alfredson pulls the Sens within one here late in the second period. That's a big goal. But Ken Tuskins, the guy that's literally from just outside of Ottawa, makes it a 3-1 to one game going into the third. Shots 22-20 to 20 in favor of the Ducks. Let's see what happens here in the third period. Are the Ducks going to lock it down? Power play for Anaheim, and they don't score. Sens need two quick ones here. Power play again for Anaheim, and they don't score. 
Oh, the Sens pull within one again. Daniel Elfords and the captains trying to get the Sens to to uh, get power to a win here in the power play again for the Ducks. And they are going to get one on the empty net and they win by a score of 4-2. So we're going back to Anaheim with a tie series. So this is going to be our first series actually that's gone past five games, I think. Yeah. So, Marchant from Niedermeyer in May, Kunitz from Penner and Niedermeyer. I think Niedermeyer might get the uh, con Smythe because he's picked up a lot of assists. Elferson from Spezza and McCammond, Huskins from May and Thornton, Elferson from Spezza, Solani from McDonald and Niedermeyer. Three stars in that game, Elferson the first star, Niedermeyer the second star, and Spezza the third Still anybody series going back here to Anaheim, back in the Honda Center. Let's see who's going to take the lead in the series. So first period underway, and Travis Moen scores early in Game 5, like he would have scored in the actual Game 5. And it's one nothing Ducks just like that. With home ice, the Ducks might be able to take the series. They're out shooting the Sens by a wide margin here too. And it is going to be one nothing after one for the Ducks. Shots fourteen to six as well for them. They are just killing the Sens offense and getting a lot of chances. But Emery is keeping the Sens in it. Will they strike another one? Power play and they don't get it done there. Halfway through the second period here, and the shots are heavily in the Ducks' favor by fifteen shots almost. And Vermette is going to tie the game up. The current Anaheim Ducks player comes through. So once again, that second line getting done for the Sens. And we have a tie game going into the third period, despite the shots being 31-14 to in favor of Anaheim. Let's see who can get the next one here in the third period. The Ducks have so much shots, but Ray Emery's keeping them in it. And Sammy Paulson comes through and has given the Ducks a 2-1 lead. And Marshank comes through minutes after that to make it 3-1. to But McCammon answers, holy crap, McCammon answers and get 3-2. But Getzlav makes it 4-2. to what an offensive third period here. Power play again for the Ducks if they don't score. And it looks like the Ducks are going to take a chance to win the Stanley Cup in Ottawa as they win 4-2. They outshot the Sens 42-19 in that game. Heavily outshot and they kind of just barely won to an extent. So, Moen from Paulson and Perry. Vermette from Comrie and Fisher. Paulson from Penner and Pronger. Too much peas on this team to be honest. <laughs> Marchand from Perry and Penner, Kamen from Saprikin and Eves, and Getzlav from McDonald and Solani. So, three stars in this game number five. Paulson with the first star with two points, Penner the second star with two points, and Perry the third star with two points. Yeah, there's too much peas on the Ducks. Paulson, Penner, Perry, who else? I don't think there's anybody else, but still, that if that's all one line, that's pretty crazy. Okay, so the Ducks have a chance to win the Stanley Cup in Ottawa, or will Ottawa force a Game 7? This is the first time we've had this much games in a series. We're going to slow sim the entire game. If we there's a chance where the Ducks could win the series, we will go into the game and watch. Last 10 minutes here of the first period. Shots are pretty even. Nobody's running away with it just yet. Nobody has managed to score either. And there's the first goal of the game, Andy McDonald. Like I said, in the actual Stanley Cup Finals, Andy McDonald scored like four or five goals. He was a really good beast for the Ducks in this Finals. And they outshot the Sens 10-5 after one. Second period now underway. The Sens need to find a way to claw back into this power play. And they still don't score on the power play. Power play again. And they still don't score that. It's not good for the Sens. Shots are 17-13. Currently, and after two, it is still one nothing Anaheim. Shots 21-13 as well. So let's go into this third period. Is it going to be a Duck Stanley Cup win like it was actually, but in six games instead of five games? We're going to have to intervene soon. So I'm going to put it down to four times here just because it's getting closer to the end of the game. When there's about like a minute and a bit left, I'll let you guys watch like the last minute of it so you guys can see the Stanley Cup win. If it is the stage like that, last five minutes here, we're going to intervene soon. Still, the Ducks are holding on to this. And, yeah, we're going to intervene right now with a minute 18 left. So, I'll let you guys watch this game. 
uh, between the Sens and the Ducks. Maybe the Sens could tie it up and force a Game 7, but it looks like the Ducks are going to take the Stanley Cup in six games instead of five games. So I'll see you guys here at the end of the game. If you're just with us, it's been a tremendous bit of hockey so far and more to come. Possession established. Good reach there. He's got a chance. Wonderful save. What skill by both goalie and shooter. You want to score goals, you have to go to this area. Good save there. Snapping a pass to Niedermeyer. Gets in and he'll look over his options. Let's it go. A whistle and a rest. We are in the 60th minute out of 60. One into another. Heatley's always been a leader for his club, and now he's trying to push the rock up the hill as they get themselves back to within level striking distance. It's an onside play. Good, great opportunity denied. Puts pads together and got the whistle. The goalie has left. A skater is on. An extra one to try to get a key goal near the end. That is a large win by the defensive centerman. Congratulations to him. Blocked away. The puck taken hold up by Getzlaff. Taken over again. What a hit. Net open. He scores. should put the icing on the cake. Time to go home. The empty netter will wrap this thing up. They win the draw and will now set up an attack. That one is pointed to him. Good shooting place. Great glove save, and he keeps it. Oh, if you're a shooter, you don't want to see the goaltender flash his glove like that. Does not get any more dramatic than this. Four feet by six. Yawning open at one end, hoping for an advantage at the other. What a dream realized for so many of these athletes and all their fans. Your name goes on it, the Stanley Cup.
so there you guys have it. The Anaheim Ducks have won the Stanley Cup kind of in the same fashion as they did in real life, and except for this time it was in six games instead of five games. Jay Shiger took home the Conn Smythe, and as well, Timo Solani scored a bit of a weird goal on the empty netter. Well, kind of a dirty goal, to be honest. I think there should have been a penalty on that play. Could be just my sense fan bias coming in, but it was kind of a greasy goal, empty netter. Go back to it if I can. There you go. So basically what happened is the Ducks, I guess, dumped it in. Wait, let's see. Yeah, the Ducks dumped it in. Getzlav doesn't shoot it on the net. And then Volchenkov just gets stood up by Timo Solani, who definitely wants that cup at age 33. Destroys Volchenkov and then just takes a shot from a really bad angle and scores. So the Anaheim Ducks win the cup. Now let's just do one little last thing. Check over the player stats, see who did what for each team. We know uh, that uh, Jaguar had like a 1.4 goals against average or something like that. But let's see about the other players on each team, like how good the Spezza, Heatley, and Alfredson line played for Ottawa, and all that sort of stuff. So, Timo Solani led the way in points from everybody with 5 points. Penner had 5 points as well. That's kind of weird. Huh, interesting. Um... Scott Niemeyer had four assists. Todd Marchant had three points. So, yeah, the depth of the Ducks came through, it looks like. The best line for the Sens looks like it was the Vermette Fisher and, um, what's his name? Vermette Fisher and uh, Schaefer line because three points for each Vermette and Fisher, and I think Schaefer had, like, two points. Um, the Spezza Alfredson line was comprised for five points so far. Did he even have that much? No, Heatley only had one goal in six games. It's not really like Danny Heatley, to be honest. But whatever. Plus minus leader was Joe DePenta. Okay, interesting. Pelling minutes, Chris Pronger, not a surprise. Being that big of a player, like six foot six, two twenty is pretty huge. Sean Thornton, that's good that some of the guys that actually take penalties are taking penalties. Things that uh, show that my uh, players are kind of accurate to an extent. Shooting percentage, Chris Kunitz, 25%, but the best was Marchant, who had more shots. Solani had a really good shooting percentage as well. Best face-off man, let's see. McDonald, yeah, that should be good, because McDonald, I put his face-offs at E5. McCammon, pretty good. Comrie, pretty good. But then again, a lot of these guys, oh, they took some decent amount of draw draws too. So Most hits, probably Chris Pronger, right? No, Heatley. Damn, Danny Heatley took more hits threw more hits than anybody on this team. Did I put his physical too good? Uh, not really that much. Uh, giveaways, Joe DePenta, takeaways, Timo Solani. Okay, and finally the goaltender set. How good did Ray Emery play? Ray Emery, 2-4, 941 save percentage, one shutout, and at 2.13 goals against average. So he actually played really well despite his team losing. Um, and it's weird because I put him as a, I think I put him as a fringe starter, a high fringe starter, and for some reason his potential, just because he's 26, went up to a high starter. So, that's interesting, and yeah, that's going to do it, I guess, for this episode of our Stanley Cup Finals rematch series, guys. So next episode, like I said, we are going to be doing the 1991 Finals between the Pittsburgh Penguins and the Minnesota North Stars. So thank you guys so much for watching. See you guys next time.